Welcome to When Gen X Ruled the Multiplex, where I look at the films that shaped the MTV generation. You know what film genre the 80s absolutely comprehensively nailed? Dance movies. Flashdance, Footloose, Staying Alive, Dirty Dancing, Fame, White Knights, Tap, Beat Street, Breakin, and Breakin 2, Electric Boogaloo are all classics of the genre, as is, in its own scruffy and underdog way, 1985's Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, which is only tangentially linked to the 1983 Cyndi Lauper pop hit that inspired its title. Girls Just Wanna Have Fun was directed by music video director Alan Metter, who also directed Back to School and Moving. It was written by Amy Spies, who went on to work on both Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210. Brainless yet likable, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun is a low-budget quickie that went on to become a cable television staple. If you are super into teen-friendly 80s kitsch but have already seen all the major hits, do yourself a favor and head in the direction of this film. We open in Chicago, as portrayed by Los Angeles, in a classroom in a Catholic school for girls where new student Janie Glenn nervously introduces herself to her classmates. She explains that she's an army brat who has lived all over the world and she loves to dance. She's always wanted to live in Chicago, which is home of her favorite television show, Dance TV. Janie is adorable yet awkward and her new classmates giggle at her. However, she grabs the immediate attention of fellow dance aficionado and all-purpose free spirit Lynn. Janie is played by future Sex and the City star Sarah Jessica Parker, whom we have already seen in a small role in Footloose. Lynn is played by Helen Hunt, future Oscar winner for As Good As It Gets, then known for the ABC sitcom It Takes Two, and for the made-for-TV movie Quarterback Princess. After school, Lynn invites Janie over to the house at which she's doing a spectacularly half-assed job of babysitting so they can watch dance TV together. I want to point out that Lynn is wearing a headband with blue plastic dinosaurs attached to it. Throughout this film, Lynn will wear some amazing things on her head. This is just a small taste of the divine madness to come. While Come On Shout by Alex Brown plays, we see footage from Dance TV, which seems very similar to Solid Gold or American Bandstand or Soul Train or Dance Fever or any of the other music and dance themed TV shows that were popular in the 80s. All of us Gen X babies are very familiar with this brand of programming. Dance TV's gregarious host Gary Woods is played by Richard Blade, long-standing disc jockey for Los Angeles's K-Rock Radio station. Gary announces upcoming auditions to find new featured dance TV dancers. After his announcement, his co-host Ricky delivers the current music news. Ricky, who is played by Christy Summers, is impossibly glamorous and sleazy and is the object of Lynn's fervent admiration. Janie is hesitant, but Lynn convinces her to audition with her for dance TV. Meanwhile, blue-collar teen hunk Jeff is pressured to audition by his best friend Drew. Jeff is played by Lee Montgomery, who had a steady career as a child actor in film and television throughout the 70s, including a starring role in 1972's Ben, though he retired from acting shortly after this film. Fun fact, his sister is Belinda Montgomery, known for playing Doogie Howser's mom and for playing Sonny Crockett's estranged wife Caroline on Miami Vice. Drew is played by Jonathan Silverman, who would go on to appear in Brighton Beach Memoirs and Weekend at Bernie's before starring in the mid-90s sitcom The Single Guy. Jeff's cute-as-a-button kid sister Maggie is played by future 90210 star Shannon Doherty, whom we recently saw in Heathers. Also planning on auditioning for dance TV is gorgeous yet spiteful Natalie, played by Holly Gagné, known for Baywatch and many soap operas, including One Life to Live and Days of Our Lives. We instantly know Natalie is both rich and spoiled because her bedroom features a closet with revolving racks that operate via remote control. Janie tries to talk her overprotective army colonel father into letting her audition for dance TV, but he refuses to let her go out in the city alone. Somehow the idea that one or both of her parents could give her a ride to the audition is never raised. And that passes the sniff test. One thing many of us Gen Xers have in common is parents with zero interest in attending our extracurriculars. Janie's father is played by character actor Ed Lauder, whom we recently saw in Real Genius. Janie also has the requisite bratty kid brother seen in almost all 80s teen films. This particular one is named Zach, and he's played by Ian Michael Giotti. Janie disobeys her father and sneaks off to join Lynn at the Dance TV open auditions. Janie is still wearing her school uniform, which is a bold fashion risk, but Lynn is re splendent in a beret adorned with a giant fake grasshopper. When Natalie pulls up in her red Mercedes convertible and almost runs over Janie and Lynn, Lynn mocks Natalie and instantly becomes her lifelong enemy. To Anna Motion's cover of the Motown classic Dancing in the Streets, the auditions begin, and they are filled with all kinds of splendidly over-the-top 80s shenanigans. Lynn's randomly assigned dance partner is bribed by Natalie to sabotage Lynn's audition. While Lynn gets bumped in the first round, Janie, who has a strong background in gymnastics, flips her 
way straight into the finals. I'm not a graphic design expert, and yet I feel that the dance TV people have flunked Logo Creation 101. The finalists also include Jeff and Snobby Natalie, and Jeff and Janie end up paired together by the audition judges. The winning pair will be chosen during a live televised event on dance TV. Jeff's father, played by Biff Yeager, disapproves of Jeff's ambitions, urging him to learn a skill in trade school instead of wasting his time dancing. While Lynn causes a distraction, Janie sneaks out of choir practice to rehearse with Jeff. While Too Cruel by Amy Hart plays, Jeff and Janie squabble with each other while showing off their cool dance moves. A jealous Natalie, who is hot for Jeff, spies on them. Upon learning that Janie cut class, Natalie poses as a nun and calls Janie's father to report her truancy. Thinking fast, Lynn gets Janie out of trouble with her parents by explaining that Janie had an accident during gymnastics tryouts. And she does this all while wearing a Davy Crockett raccoon skin cap paired with an ammunition belt. While shopping at the mall, Janie and Lynn run into Maggie and Drew while Drew is getting fitted for a tux for Natalie's upcoming debutante ball. Lynn, Janie, and Maggie head to a copy shop to make 150 copies of Drew's invitation, then scamper around town distributing invitations to all the punks, misfits, outcasts, and alternative kids they can find, in a brisk and lively montage scored to Deborah Golly's cover of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Because this is not the kind of film with the robust soundtrack budget necessary to secure the rights to Cyndi Lauper's iconic version. Natalie's party takes place at a country club, where Natalie's snooty rich father enforces a strict door policy to keep out the riffraff. Natalie's father is played by Morgan Woodward, known for Gunsmoke and Dallas, and for playing despicable villains in what seems like a whole lot of A-Team episodes. Natalie's Ball is a drab affair, where a very lame band called The Grateful Dudes plays a laconic jazz version of You're 16, You're Beautiful, and You're Mine, while all the guests, who include Jeff and Drew, look bored out of their skulls. The party is livened up considerably when a party crasher backflips right through the windows. Dozens of uninvited punks converge on the party, accompanied by the headbanging strains of Holland's wake-up the neighborhood. One of the punks is played by an uncredited Robert Downey Jr., who was dating Sarah Jessica Parker at the time. This is one of my very favorite tropes of 80s teen films. Chaotic 80s parties feature into a whole lot of films, including Risky Business, Valley Girl, Sixteen Candles, Pretty in Pink, and many more. But you know what's even better? A lame party populated by stuffy rich people, which gets crashed by the wrong element, which immediately makes the party much better. This scenario unfolds in Weird Science, Some Kind of Wonderful, and Tough Turf, but Girls Just Wanna Have Fun has an especially entertaining example of this. During gymnastics practice at Janie's Catholic School, during which we are treated to the sight of a habit-wearing nun absolutely slaying it on a pommel horse, Janie slips off to talk to Jeff. In the aftermath of Natalie's wild party, Janie and Jeff have warmed up to each other, and they flirt a bit while making plans to meet to rehearse. In a sequence scored to Chris Farron's On the Loose, Janie sneaks out of her bedroom window at night. She meets Jeff at a basketball-themed dance club, where they start to fall in love on the dance floor. Also at the club, Drew sexually harasses and gropes this poor woman. As much as I like Jonathan Silverman, Drew is a totally obnoxious character, and while much of this film is harmless good fun, Drew's antics have not aged well. At the club, Jeff gets into a fist fight with a thug over Janie. Jeff and Janie take off on Jeff's motorcycle, then they smooch a bit in front of Janie's apartment building. In a montage set to I Can Fly by Rainey, Jeff and Janie polish their dance routine, preparing for the big televised final while falling in love. Natalie urges her dad to fix the dance TV competition by eliminating her competitors. Natalie's dad owns the factory where Jeff's dad works, so he confronts Jeff and threatens to have his father fired unless he drops out of the competition. Upset about this, Jeff shows up at rehearsal in a foul mood and picks a fight with Janie before announcing that he's quitting the competition. When a frustrated and confused Janie sneaks back in through her bedroom window, she's caught by her father and grounded. Jeff's father is appalled when he finds out Jeff's dropping out of the competition to protect his job, and he urges his son to reconsider. Jeff sends a message to Janie via her little brother to let Janie know the competition is still on. Lynn, who is sporting some amazing hair, helps Janie sneak out. They joyously tear across town, scrambling over stalled cars during a traffic jam and make it to the studio just in time for the broadcast. At the studio, dance TV is in chaos because co-host Ricky has quit in a huff. To Dancing in Heaven, Orbital Bebop by British one-hit wonder q Feel, the final auditions begin. Janie and Jeff are up last, and they blow everyone away with their synchronized flips. The host declares a tie between Janie and Jeff and Natalie and her partner. The ultimate winners will be decided in a dance-off. Both pairs of dancers take the floor and dance their hearts out to Technique by Rainey. Janie's parents happen to catch 
catch a glimpse of Janie on television. Her dad storms down to the studio with the intention of dragging her home, but upon seeing her on the dance floor, he's dazzled by the sight of her dance moves. Janie and Jeff bust out some more synchronized flips for their grand finale, and while it's definitely more of a gymnastics routine than a dance routine, it's enough to give them the win. As Janie's dad applauds wildly, newly crowned winners Janie and Jeff kiss on live TV. To make their win even sweeter and more ludicrous, Lynn bursts onto the dance TV stage in a horse-drawn carriage while wearing a spangly outfit, having replaced Ricky as the new dance TV co-host. Girls Just Wanna Have Fun is a trifle. It is an utterly inconsequential film, and it's very silly. But honestly, it's kind of mindlessly delightful. Janie and Jeff are a cute couple, but appropriately, the heart of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun is the dynamic between the two girls at the core of it. Awkward, repressed Janie and free-spirited, chaotic Lynn. Janie and Lynn are a ton of fun together. Sarah Jessica Parker's first hint of Hollywood stardom came from playing a likable dork on the new wave sitcom Square Pegs in a role not too dissimilar from Janie. These sort of awkward yet endearing roles were Parker's bread and butter throughout the 80s, and she was very good at them. But this is really Helen Hunt's film. Lynn is a force of nature, a high school version of Madonna's character from Desperately Seeking Susan. In a few years, Lynn is probably going to be grifting her way across Manhattan, breaking hearts and swiping priceless Egyptian artifacts from Atlantic City mobsters. We saw this in Footloose too, but there was a popular motif in 80s teen films where the teens just want to dance and the adults don't want to let them. Experiences vary, but I don't remember this being a real-life problem while growing up in the 80s. If you're a member of Gen X, your parents came of age in the 50s and 60s, and thus they probably grew up learning plenty of dances, both the ballroom classics like the waltz and the tango and the foxtrot, as well as the newer dances inspired by the birth of rock and roll, like the bunny hop or the twist. No matter what teen movies kept trying to tell us, most of our parents were probably cool with us dancing, and most of them were probably better at it than we were. Which brings me to a greater point. The 80s were an outstanding decade for dance movies, but with some important exceptions, a mediocre decade for actual dancing. By and large, the dance movies of the 80s, while dazzling to watch, didn't introduce many dance moves that could be easily replicated in a high school gym on prom night. There was break dancing, of course, and I don't want to diminish the importance of that because that was a very influential style that could be done recreationally, and that endures to this day. But films like Footloose, Flashdance, and Girls Just Wanna Have Fun all featured freestyle contemporary jazz ballet dance hybrids with big showy solo routines that often involved props or equipment. In Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, Jeff and Janie bust out a full-on Olympic-style gymnastics floor routine for their dance TV final. For the most part, watching 80s dance films will not help you hone your own dance skills. I watched an awful lot of dance films in the 80s, and I loved them all, and I am to this day a relentlessly mediocre dancer. Above and beyond the dance routines, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun serves as a perfect time capsule of 80s teen fashions and 80s teen attitudes. It's a goofy film, and not everything hits, but it's so overwhelmingly energetic and cheerful that it's hard not to get swept up in its particular wave of brainless fun. Next time, we're going to find out what happens when you feed a mogwai after midnight in the 1984 holiday-themed horror comedy classic Gremlins. Thank you for sticking with me today, and I hope you join me then.